This video is sponsored by Cruiseman's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Okay, I think we're about ready. I got my sign up. And I know it's a little dark there, but everybody knows it's the Crown Royal sign. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crown and Comments, my first episode of 2023. And uh, we've got a lot to cover tonight. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of comments, maybe 15, 16 different ones here. And if this is your first time here, uh, just to let you know, this is something I do about once a month, or I try to do it once a month. And this is just an opportunity for me to sit down and talk about anything. Generally speaking, it's motorcycle related, but not necessarily. I might get off topic and who knows what I'll go into. You never know. Usually something that pisses somebody off. What I normally try to do is go through all the comments that you've given me over the last month, and I try to respond to them. Now, if you're passionate about motorcycles, you love motorcycles, and you like content like this, do me a favor. Click that subscribe button down below. Don't forget the notification bell. I also would like to let you know that I've got my new Insta360 camera. I did my first moto vlog this week with the Insta360. Uh, we have very, very cold weather here this week. It's supposed to actually snow tomorrow, which is, you know, we don't get a lot of snow here. We'll get it, you know, once or twice a year maybe, but uh, it's going to be cold and yucky enough. I'm not going to want to ride. Yet I've still got some work to do. I'm going to be doing some video on some disassembly and stuff getting ready. I don't want to get into all that tonight. We just need to get right into it. Let's start talking about the contents. Now, speaking of that Insta360 camera, uh, a couple of you did post or send me some comments regarding that. And one of them was the video I did on the dead battery. This is from Tim Cade. But he said, very simply, I like the Insta360, keep using it, I want one too. And uh, in response to that, I went ahead and put a link on my Amazon page for the, or my Amazon store for the Insta360. I also have links to the GoPro cameras. Uh, but I think I'm impressed enough so far with this Insta360 that I do recommend it for people that are a little more advanced with editing. It's got uh, some features that are, I would say that's more for an advanced vlogger, moto vlogger, or just video videographer. But it's uh, pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to like it. I'm going to you know use it some more and do some more editing. So anyway, Tim, thanks for the message. Another message along the same lines is from Michael O'Neill, and he just says, cool camera, keep using it. Most of the comments I received, and I did ask people to comment on it, and it, they were very positive. So that's good news. Now, this is another comment on my where I had the dead battery on my Goldwing, where I talked about replacing the battery. And this is from Gregory Tragett. He says, I suggest using a battery tender whenever you park your motorcycle at home. My Optimate, 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 I think it is, conditions the battery as well as maintaining the charge. And he says, I've been postponing buying a jump starter. But when I saw the SAE adapter for yours, I ordered the jump starter and adapter, and I like the new video. Okay, now what Gregory is referring to is the SAE adapter that goes to my Skosh jump starter, the Power Up 700. And one of the reasons I carry it on the motorcycle as opposed to the Fantic, which I also have and like, in fact, there's some things about the Fantic I like better, but one thing I do love about the Skosh is it's got this little pigtail that ties into an SAE connector, which is your kind of your standard like what you would use for a battery tender, that little two-prong connector. And it goes from that to its own proprietary connector, which hooks right up to the jump starter. So what that means is when I come home, at, like Gregory suggested, I do actually plug in the battery tender 
when I come in. If, I, if I'm going to be off the bike for more than a couple of days, I will put it on the battery tender. If I know I'm going to be riding every day, like in the summer, sometimes I forget and I don't put it on the battery tender. But if I know I'm going to be off the bike for any period of time, I will hook up the battery tender and it just plugs right into that Skosh connector. So it's a great convenience. And if there's anything I could recommend these other manufacturers do that make jump starters, put together a connector like Skosh did where you can go from SAE to their proprietary connector because that just makes it a no-brainer for a motorcycle. Craig Kressner, along the same line, said I had the same issue many times. Now, he's talking about the issue with his battery going dead comes out to the garage, lights are flickering, doing all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, trickle charger would not charge the battery. I could jump it and it would start, then try to start again and it'd be dead. Took it to the dealer many times, replaced batteries. Okay, you can read. It's a long message. You can read it. But basically, he had a similar electronic or electrical situation that I had on this bike. Again, I think it's probably because I pulled into the garage the bike was still slightly rolling when I turned it off, and it just didn't turn everything off. It's kind of a weird thing on the Goldwing that it will do that. Another battery-related comment from C5129. He asks, why did you not use a lithium-ion battery for the replacement? Well, that's a very good question. I did consider it. And for those of you that aren't aware, you can buy lithium-ion batteries for the Goldwing, and they're the advantage being they're much, much lighter. They they weigh less than half of what a regular battery, and they take up less space. They're a little smaller. There are some downsides to lithium-ion, and I remember back when uh, Motorcycle Consumer News was still printing an actual magazine every month. One of the last episodes, not episodes, one of the last issues that they had, they did a comparison of glass mat batteries like we have in the Goldwing to the lithium ion. And I wish I could tell you, somebody out there probably has that magazine and has that article and you could probably post a link to it or something. I wish I could tell you their reasoning behind or I should say they're reasoning against lithium ion. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it was enough when I read it to think, I'm going to wait until this lithium ion controversy gets resolved. It just, there was something about using lithium ion that was not as good as the glass mat, the standard typical battery. It had advantages. The lithium ion did have some advantages over the glass mat, but there were a couple of things that I thought to myself, nah. And, and some of you may know what those are, and if you do, please put it in the comments down below and you know help everybody out. I just don't remember what they were at the moment. I just remember reading that article, and it was enough for me to shy away from lithium ion. Interesting. The company that I ordered this battery from, this UASO, which is the factory replacement battery, they did offer me a lithium ion for the same price. It was like last year's model that was getting ready to be replaced with a brand new model. And they said, if I wanted the lithium ion instead, I could have it. And I'm not going to mention the name of the company here because it's not a sponsored video. But uh, that was interesting, and I had to email them back and say, thanks for the offer, but I think I'm going to stick with the glass mat battery. Because typically, lithium-ion batteries are quite a bit more expensive than a glass mat battery, just so you know. And then, I think the last battery-related comment comes from TT181. He asks, any reason, I assume it's a he, it may be a she, any reason you didn't go with an Harley-Davidson UASA battery, it has more cranking amps. And uh, the only reason, I guess, is I was unaware of that. I, I've never heard anybody mention that before. Do, are any of you running a Harley-Davidson UASA battery in your Goldwing? Uh, let me know in the comments down below, it, are any of you using that HD version of the UASA battery? I was unaware of it. The next topic, it's really not an email, but David Smith, I think, sent me a, to a video, and the video is from, I think it's Goldwing Docs. I'm not sure. It's on YouTube, 
And I will put a link to this video in the description down below, and I might even include it up in the corner of this video. And the subject matter is this uh, DCT clutch failures as it relates to slow speed, you know, riding your bike slow speed for an extended period of time. And I think mostly doing parking lot duty or you know, where you're practicing low speed turns and you're sl you can't really slip the clutch but you can use your brake and you know kind of uh keep it maybe in first gear and then just try some slow speed maneuvers like around pylons or things like that and this whole video talks about how one owner basically destroyed his clutch i'll let you watch the video to get the whole message and Honda would not cover it under warranty because they claimed that rather than a defective part, it had to do with the rider's riding style. And uh, this is kind of interesting, it raises a lot of interesting questions about low speed maneuvers. Could this motorcycle really be good or something that could be used by, say, police departments for low speed maneuvers and things like that? It's something you should be aware of, because I know some of you might do uh, obstacle course training or low speed training. And apparently, once you, I guess, burn up this DCT transmission, that's it. It has to be replaced. And Honda will not replace it under warranty if they determine that the damage to your transmission came as a result of this low speed riding. I call bullshit on this. And the reason I do is because Honda never told anybody up front that you can't ride the motorcycle like this. And it's pretty standard practice. Even if you're taking a riding lesson, like an advanced motorcycle course, it's pretty common practice to do low speed turns practicing that by on a DCT, all you can really do is, you know, apply the rear brake while you give some power, maybe in first gear, but you're going very slow, maybe three or four miles an hour or five miles an hour. And apparently, if you do this for an extended period of time, this can damage the DCT transmission or the clutch. I shouldn't say transmission. I should say damage the DCT. And you know, and I saw some comments on the video and somebody, you know, some people are blaming the rider, saying it's his fault, but it's pretty common practice to do this on a motorcycle. So at the very least, Honda should have a warning or some sort of sticker on the motorcycle when you buy it saying that you can't do this. You do this for an extended period and they should run tests and find out how long can you do this without causing damage. Is it an overheating issue? And if it is, why isn't there some sort of sensor to alert you that the DCT is getting hot or getting uh, overtaxed? I just, I think uh, Honda is going to be in a legal situation here because if I was this guy and I burned up my transmission doing something that I consider to be fairly standard practice on a motorcycle. Uh, and Honda may need to come out with some sort of a, you know, a, a, an update to all their owners to say this is something you can't do on a DCT. And I have never seen anything like that from Honda. What are your thoughts? Do you blame the rider for do doing these low speed maneuvers and? ultimately causing damage to his motorcycle. Watch the video from Goldwing Docs and let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, like I say, I'll put a link to that video in this video so that you can go watch it for yourself. I think I found it very interesting and concerning. Okay, the next comment is from Bill Carcel, and he says, I'm subscribed to your great maintenance video series. Thank you, Bill. Please show us how to add a decent AM-FM antenna to a 2018 Goldwing. Uh, you often mention the radio poor, uh, radio's poor reception. Uh, Bill, I've tried it. I've tried a couple of different aftermarket antennas uh, mounted behind the passenger seat rest. And I haven't found anything yet that makes any difference. Um, maybe they're just as bad as the factory. It really is uh, pretty sad that it has this reception. But that's just the way it is. Um, I, I, I'm going to try. If somebody comes up with a solution to this, if you've come up with an aftermarket antenna 
that has improved your AM FM reception on a 2018 plus Goldwing, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, we'll, maybe we'll make a video about it. Larry Hadley says, thank you, Cruise Man, for all you do. You're welcome. Uh, your maintenance videos have saved me thousands and gave me confidence that I'm riding a properly maintained motorcycle. Well, thank you, Larry. Very nice. Glad to hear that. Glad you're enjoying them. Keep those videos coming. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, great. And I think one more comment, similar to that from Bill Beretta, I think he sent me an email, said, I've purchased your maintenance video and find it very helpful. Thank you for the updates. They're great. I have a question. What size lithium battery should I use in my 2022 Honda Goldwing DCT? And maybe this is something I could address in Crown and Comments, which I am right now. Now, there are online sellers. Uh, Wing Stuff comes to mind. CycleMax comes to mind. Uh, there are others. Whoever your favorite online seller, maybe even Partzilla, I'm not sure. But they do sell uh, lithium-ion batteries for the Goldwing. So basically, if you just go to one of those websites or go to your local Honda dealer, they probably sell lithium-ion batteries at your local Honda dealer. And these websites or your dealer will know which is the correct size battery for your Honda Goldwing. I do not know that personally. You might even be able to go to a battery manufacturer's website and do a search for a Honda Goldwing, you know, 2018 plus, and it may uh, give you some result that way as well. So that would be my recommendation. The next two comments are one is from Al Shar. Al-Shari Al Al-Shari Walid Al-Shari Walid I hope I'm getting that right please forgive me if I mispronounce your name and Al-Shari says please make a review for the BMW R1200 RT and you may not know this but that's actually the motorcycle I wanted to review when I reviewed the K1600 GTL it's just they didn't have one available. All they had was the K1600 for a press bike. So I am in touch. I have a contact at BMW. I, I am going to make them aware that in the spring, I desperately want to review the R1250 RT. I personally have an interest in the bike. I think it's, it just looks like a really nice motorcycle. And I really, I, I get, I get a question like this at least once a week from somebody wanting me to review the R1250 RT. So it's on my radar. Thank you for bringing that up again. The next comment, which is a comment that was put on my Triumph review, is from CMO Erob. I, I don't know how to pronounce or say that. Maybe that's a name. Maybe that's just some bunch of letters. CMO Erob. Maybe that I'm sure that stands for something. I just don't know what it is. And uh, that comment says, "Nice review. You should try a Ducati X Diavel Diavel. How do you say it? Diavel or Diavel? And uh, same ballpark as the Triumph. Uh, it's one of those roadster bikes. Beating heart of the X Diavel Nera, the Testra Strada DVT." 1262 delivers maximum power of 160 horsepower at 9,500 RPM, and he goes on and talks a little more about it. Now, uh, I, I have a, a great interest in reviewing a D Ducati. I've never ridden a Ducati. The dealership that I picked up the Triumph from actually is a Ducati dealer also. They're also a Royal Enfield dealer. And the person that I dealt with there at European Cycle Sports here in Plano told me that he would uh, try to get me in, in touch with the press and the media people at Royal Enfield. He did make it sound like Ducati is a little more difficult to deal with. I've tried to reach out to Ducati through their website. I've had no luck. Uh, just to let you know right up front, I've had no luck with Harley. I've had no luck with Yamaha. I've had no luck with Ducati. Now, that can change. You just never know. But I have reached out to all these companies to see about reviewing their certain motorcycle models. 
And uh, because I'm interested in reviewing, and, and Suzuki as well. Now, I did get a response back from somebody at Suzuki, but they told me they do not ship bikes out for media reviews. You have to basically be in California or Florida uh, at one of their events. And I just, you know, I'm not. I'm in Dallas, Texas. And I understand why some companies can't do it. Indian and uh, Honda and BMW, well, BMW, I flew out and picked the bike up and rode it back. And then with Triumph, I think they shipped it to the dealership, and I went and picked it up at European Cycle Sports there in Plano. So anyway, just to let you know, I am interested in Ducati. I'm more interested in the Multistrada. Honestly, that to me is a sexy motorcycle. I would love to ride and review that bike for the channel. I think we're going to get more reviews as these reviews that I've already done uh, are proving to be pretty successful. The BMW review last year was my highest viewed video of the year. The Triumph review right now is doing very, very well. The Indian review did very All these motorcycle reviews are in the top five of my videos. So they're getting a lot of attention, a lot of views, and that's what makes a difference to these manufacturers. They want to know that their product is going to get viewed by as many people as possible. And I try to be fair in my review. I try to be objective and as much as I am able to. Now, I think I did a video, and it might have been, I don't think it was the last crown in comments. I don't remember. I did a video in the studio right after I got this new little Insta360, I think they call it Link. I'm not even sure what it's called. It's this little, I actually got the camera to do overhead shots of unboxing videos. In fact, I've got it mounted right up here above me. But I tried doing a second angle in that video. Actually, it was my 2022 year in review video. That's the one. And Russ Optoff put a comment in on that video where I did those two different angles. And he said, the second camera is just distracting. Okay, thanks, Russ. Appreciate that feedback. And Maureen Cops said, Happy New Year. The second camera is not needed. Great studio. I think she's complimenting on my new studio. So most of the comments I got regarding that second camera angle were that it was not necessary or it was just distracting or it really wasn't needed. Thank you for all of you that put in those comments. Now, when I'm doing an unboxing video, it's nice to have an overhead shot of the table so you can see what I'm taking out of the box. And I will be using it for that. So I'm looking forward to maybe doing my next unboxing video so you'll see how that camera comes into play a little better. Now, my last, my last comment. Okay, hold the applause. My last comment is from Old Jim. And he says, I just bought a 2022 Goldwing trike and I have an appointment to get it ceramic coated on January 16th, which is my birthday. So I guess he's already had it done. And he was asking me, is ceramic coating the windshield and the instrument clear lens a wise idea? Very, very good question for those of you that are considering having your paint ceramic coated or if you're planning to do it yourself. Now, I did email or uh, replied to his comment, and I recommended against it. The ceramic coating itself should not harm the windshield or the clear dash lens. I want to be clear about that. Or any clear part or any flat black part. The ceramic coating itself shouldn't do any harm to those parts, and it would most likely add a layer of protection. The reason I advised against it is because of what is necessary when it comes time to remove the ceramic coating. To remove ceramic coating from paint, you basically have to, I'm not going to say grind it off, but you have to polish it off. You can't just take alcohol and wipe it off and have it come off like wax or sealant. It's a more permanent bond. It's not permanent, but it's semi-permanent. So you, there is a procedure for removing old, like 
after the ceramic coating has lived its life, say three years, five years, seven years. And that requires using polishes, uh, various polishes and compounds. And you wouldn't want to do that on a windshield or on your clear dash lens because you run the risk of damaging it. You run the risk of scratching it. And it, it's just not a good idea. That's why I advised against it. So anyway, for those of you who are considering that, uh, that's just my opinion. Do what you will. Some people probably have the attitude they're not going to keep the bike that long anyway, so why not go ahead and do it? Let the next guy worry about it. Uh, my school of thought is I'm always, when I do something to my motorcycle, I'm always doing it uh, with the thought in the back of my head, is the next owner going to have a problem with this? Or is this something good for the next owner or something that's going to cause them an issue? Uh, so I try to avoid doing anything that's going to fall into that category. Anyway, that's the last comment. And I think that's a lot of stuff. Everybody's pretty easy on me this month. I didn't get a lot of uh, harsh criticisms like I usually do. Usually uh, I'm you know, have to really polish off this Crown Royal to get through it because everybody's beating me up. But I'm sure it's, you know, the year is young. <laughs> I'm sure uh, my day is coming. So I want to thank you for joining me. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget, give it a thumbs up. Like the video. That really does help my YouTube rankings. Remember to share this video on your Instagram, your social media. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm posting more stuff now. Almost every day I'm posting something on Instagram. And some of it is stuff you won't see here. So follow me on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, also on Facebook. Thanks again for joining me. And remember what I always say. I don't care what you ride as long as you ride often and ride safe. I'll see you next month.